thank you for inviting me to speak. This to meeting is being recorded. Um, I've never spoken at a meeting before. This is my first time, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, uh, so I'll start from the beginning. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts. Uh, my parents are both were both addicts. Um, so I kind of grew up like in a chaotic household. My parents got divorced when I was really little. I don't even remember them being together at all. Um, so yeah, it was kind of like just me doing my own thing because um, I lived with my mom and she was always like high or like locked herself in her room. And so I kind of just like, ever since I can remember just like doing my own thing, like taking care of my little sister. Um, I had an older brother too, or have an older brother. Um, he's six years older than me. Um, I remember growing up feeling like unloved, like I didn't get too much attention because I would always see my mom like I and I would just, I remember I used to like pretend that I was like passing out or something just to get her attention. And it's like, I don't know, I just wanted attention from somebody. Um, but when I was about six or seven, um, I witnessed my mom overdose and that was like pretty traumatic for me. Um, right after that, I went into foster care for a year. Um, I stayed with my cousin. Um, I didn't really know who she was, but, um, I remember being like, oh, why can't I go stay with my dad? Like, why can't I go stay with my grandma? And I didn't really like see my dad much. Um, but coming to find out, I couldn't stay with my grandma who my dad was living with because everybody there was also doing drugs. So I was kind of like surrounded by it, like my whole family on both sides um, doing drugs and um so I grew up thinking like, I'm never gonna be like that. Like I've witnessed it my whole life. Like I don't want that in my life. Like I don't wanna turn out to be like that. Um, but yeah, I was in foster care for a year and then I came back home with my mom and I don't think I really trusted her. Like I didn't really know how to act around her. It was kind of like weird like, I didn't really know what happened specifically because I was so young. Um, but I came back and um, she did the best she could. She got sober. She um, was at a halfway house for a while and then she ended up working there. She got, she's now a drug and alcohol counselor which I'm very, very grateful for. Um, so after that, like I just went on, like my life was normal. Um, I, drugs are like also a part of my story. For me, um, I started smoking weed when I was like 12. And I think like I had all this like abandon, these abandonment issues and I just wanted to push everything down. Like I didn't even like, I had told so many people my story. Like I had told so many people about what happened that I think I just like pushed it down to where like I had no emotion towards it. Like I didn't think of it as bad anymore. It was just like something that happened to me. Um, so yeah, I smoked when I like, as soon as I turned 12, I was like smoking. Um, and then Fast forward a little bit, I was in high school and I, something happened, I don't know, I couldn't go to school anymore. Every time I would try to go to school, I would just start having panic attacks. Like every time I'd pull up to the school, my mom would drive me to school and I would just start having a panic attack and I couldn't walk in the building and this happened for like maybe a couple of weeks. 
and I was like I don't know what's wrong with me like am I okay and so then the school thought that I should maybe go into partial hospitalization so that's what I did um I was depressed I had anxiety um and there they taught me like so many coping skills that honestly have stuck with me um I think without that I still would have been like this scared person um I mean I still have fears today but I think it taught me a lot um so after that, I dropped out of school because I don't know, I just couldn't go back. Um, and then I started working, like I worked full time after I dropped out and I got my GED. And I was like, I'd rather work, I'd rather make money than go to school. So that's what I did. I worked like full time for like a year. Um, I was in an abusive relationship at that time which kind of broke me um, when I got out of that relationship. I felt the worst I had ever felt. Like I, like my heart was broken. Like um, I didn't know what to do with myself. I thought like I was this horrible person and I did bad things, like this, like bad things to people. Um, and I think that's like when I started drinking. I don't remember my first drink, honestly. Um, I think it was like a progressive thing. Um, and honestly, like, I don't remember a lot. Like, I think smoking, like, really messed with my memory. But um, I remember, like, I remember I used to drink four locos. Like, that's what I used to drink in the beginning. And I would get like so drunk off of one and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. And my friends are like over there throwing up. I'm like, what the heck? Like, I'm having a good time. They're like ruining my night throwing up and I'm just like trying to have a good time. Um, yeah, I remember. I would also drink a lot by myself. And this was probably when I was like 15, 16. Um, I would drink by myself, like, I don't even know, like, just to have fun, I thought. Um, uh, and then, I don't know, I didn't even, like, realize, once I got sober, I didn't realize how long I had been drinking. I really think I had been drinking for, like, three years before I got sober. My sober date is June 29th, 2021. Um... And so I, drinking for me at, it was just like a progressive thing. And towards like the last year, I was drinking like every other day, like getting blackout drunk. Like I couldn't drink without getting blackout drunk. And I remember I used to say this to my friend, I'd be like, um, my goal is to get black blacked out tonight. Like that's my goal. Every time I drink, that's my goal. And I thought it was like so fun. I thought, like, I remember the first time I got blackout drunk, I was like, I can't remember anything, but that was fun. Like, I don't, I can't even like think about that now. I'm like, why would you wanna just not remember anything? Um, but it started getting worse and worse. I remember I would wake up and people would tell me these horrible things that I did. And I would just feel horrible about things that I said to people or things that I did. I don't know. I was just like embarrassing myself. And I didn't think I had a problem. And my mom kind of saw it. She was like, Megan, like, if you need help, let me know. Um, and one day... I, well, yeah, one day I woke up from a night of drinking and I had lost my car. I had lost my keys. I had lost my purse. Like I lost everything. I had lost my phone. 
I was like, this is crazy. Like where it, like, I don't even know what's going on. And I feel like shit. I'm like still drunk. And so I'm like on the phone talking to my friend and I'm like, I just feel horrible about like everything that happened. Cause like I had to go talk to people to go find my stuff. I'll be like, Hey, do you know where this is? Like, and I'm just like, um, I don't know. My life was so crazy and like chaotic. I, my whole life, like, um, and then I just like, I remember I said, I would never do that. I would never drink or do drugs like that. Um, but I honestly think like I was born like that. Um, like I was an alcoholic before I even drank. Um, so I told my mom, um, I need help. Like I just broke down crying. I was like, I need help. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. So she got me into a detox. Um, I was there for two weeks. Um, I signed myself in. At first I got there and I was like, I signed myself in. And then I was like, mom, I don't want to be here. I started crying. I was like, please bring me home. She's like, Megan, I can't bring you home. I'm sorry. And so that, I think that, that same life. Um, so I went to detox for two weeks. Um, I learned what an alcoholic was. I didn't know what an alcoholic was. I thought like you had to drink 24 seven and like, um, like you couldn't survive without alcohol. I thought that's what an alcoholic was. Um, but I learned. Um, so then I got out of detox. Um, there was a lot of cool people there. I met a lot of cool people there. Some people were there, like they were, um, they had to be there. Um, and they didn't want to be there, but I wanted to be there. I was like, I just want to help. I, just, I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. Um, but I got out. I think I got like 30 days sober and then I drank again because I was like am I really an alcoholic like am I sure and like they say in the book like go out go drink like try doing this try doing that try drinking like this and so I did I um I drank um and then I don't even know how long I was drinking honestly um not that long probably like a month or two and then it just went downhill again, like faster than the first time. Um, so one day um, I decided I'm gonna get on a meeting and I'm gonna um, see if that makes me feel better. I went to a meeting and I heard someone speaking and she, it sounded like she had what I wanted. So I immediately reached out and it was this meeting actually 5D and I reached out and I was like, Hey, will you be my sponsor? Because I knew I couldn't do it alone. I was like, I can't, like, there's no way I'm just going to stop drinking. Um, so she became my sponsor and we worked the steps and I learned a lot about myself. Um, things, I had to like f go through a lot of stuff and realize like you can feel your feelings like you're allowed to feel your feelings you don't have to push them down anymore they don't have to um be ignored so um I learned to believe in a power greater than myself and today I have that like I don't have to be alone when I am actually alone, like I'm not alone, I have somebody and that's my higher power. Like I have you guys and I'm very grateful for you. Um, I have meetings I can go to and like things didn't get um, perfect. Like things aren't perfect. Things are still, sometimes stuff gets hard, but it's manageable. 
I'm able to handle difficult situations. Um, I don't have to run to a drink and ignore my problems. <clears throat> um, today, I'm willing to become a sponsor. I went through all the steps and I, um, I want to help people like that's why I'm here today. I didn't want to say no because I know somebody probably needs to hear something that I have to say. Um, somebody can probably really, um, and I was thinking earlier, I was like, I have so much to say. Like I was nervous, but I was like, I have so much that I could say. Like, um, but yeah, today, I could say I'm content, life is good. Um, I feel loved today. Um, I have people around me that I know are there for me. Like AA brought me people that I can have valuable relationships with. Not some like a relationship that I'm afraid of like these people, I know these people are gonna stick around and they're gonna be there for me when I need somebody to talk to or I've had a hard day. Like I don't have to go to a drink. Um, so I won't talk too much longer. Um, I'll let you guys share. So thank you for having me.